This video is brought to you by mywayteaching.com. Now, let us see what is the scope and excitement of physics. So, dear students, now I will give you a very simple things and you just imagine all those things. Now, I am talking to you, isn't it? And you can hear my voice. How can you hear my voice? How is sound produced when a teacher speaks? How the sound propagates in the classroom? How do you ears? How do your ears receive this propagated sound? There should be some reason or a some mechanism behind that, isn't it? So about all these mechanisms, we are going to study in physics. So whenever I speak, the sound waves propagate through a medium called air, isn't it? Then it reaches your ears and your ears receive that voice. Then you can hear me. Isn't it? It is a very simple example of physics. Similarly, you, we have so many other natural events that are taking place in our surroundings. Okay. For example, I can uh, give you the cycle of seasons. Okay, the tides, you know about tides, right? The repetitive day and nights. Similarly, the celestial objects. So, about all these natural phenomena, uh, we are going to study in physics. So, whenever we study any natural phenomena, there are few points that we should consider. Okay, what are those points? Let us see. So, in physics, we not only observe such physical events taking place in our day-to-day -day life, but point out definite mechanisms from the series of systematic observations. So the first thing, whatever you know, we study, we'll study first the mechanisms. Okay, isn't it? We are going to study the mechanism of that natural event. So when I say I am talking and you are listening to my voice, there should be some mechanism between two of us, isn't it? Then only you can hear my voice. That is the first of all the sound is produced, then it is propagated through the medium called A, then your ears can receive that sound. So, this is a mechanism or the process that takes place where, for communication. So, similarly for any natural event, there will be particular mechanism that will take place. So, in studying any natural phenomena, the first important thing to study the mechanism of that natural event. And the second important thing is the quantities involved in such events are to be defined unambiguously and meaningfully. So when I study any natural event, we'll come up with many different quantities. Isn't it? If we stay, talk about sound, we'll talk about the, okay, the velocity of sound, the pressure, 
okay all those things are the quantities if i talk about gravitational uh, we'll come across three quantities like uh, masses of the bodies isn't it and even the distance this is a quantity parameters which are related to that the velocity acceleration so we are going to study about all these quantities whenever we deal with any natural event okay and the third important thing is to derive laws or principles from such studies so when we study any natural event we'll end up with some result isn't it when we study the theory behind that when we understand the concept at the end of our research we'll get some result so we'll express that result in the form of la laws isn't it one example is gravitational law when newton found that every object on the earth attracts every other object on the universe so he conducted so many experiments he you know he searched on that he did research on those things and finally he framed universal law of gravitation this is the result of the study okay whenever we study natural event we will definitely come with a result so those results are expressed in terms of laws and the fourth important point is such derived laws or principles are to be tested in wide perspectives so whenever we derive or when we form any law the important thing is testing because the law whatever we form it should holds good in all the situations okay uh, if i say it is a universal law which means that law is acceptable universally that law holds good for each and every object in the whole universe for that we should do testing isn't it we should do testing of the laws under different situations for example uh, in in few laws like which are related to thermodynamics i can say we'll check not only thermodynamics if we consider any law we'll check under different conditions so if i take an example of temperature uh, first we'll check at low temperature at a normal temperature and at a very high temperature so that law should pass in all those tests then only we can accept it as a valid law isn't it so this is these are the four important points that we you know whenever we study any natural event we should consider these four points these are very important physics involves the study of two fundamental constituents one is matter and the other one is radiation so all the objects in the universe is made up of matter isn't it so it is a it is made up of uh, particles that is uh, called as matter isn't it and uh, even these particles or the objects in the universe emit radiations under different conditions so in physics we are going to study about this matter and the radiation emitted by the matter okay in different conditions about all those things we are going to study in physics and even interaction between the uh, the objects and the laws of nature which are related to them so all those things we are going to study in physics so i told you matter okay whenever we heard a word matter one thing that comes to our mind is what is that yes that is nucleus of an atom the fundamental particle isn't it so in this nucleus of an atom here we study the interaction between protons neutrons mesons so this blue and red color what we are seeing in this figure this is proton and neutron and this electrons okay which are revolving around this uh, proton and neutron they are nothing but 
electrons okay the energies of the nucleus with radius of the order 10 raised to minus 14 meter form due to such interactions okay the energies of this electrons are formed because of the interaction between protons neutrons and mesons okay and even this electrons uh, they uh, emit they emit radiations okay they undergo interactions between protons and neutrons the electrons uh, which are revolving around the nucleus of an atom they are revolving at a radius of 10 raised to minus 10 meter okay and these electrons which are revolving around the nucleus of an atom so they will they those uh, electrons will be having a specific uh, electronic uh, configuration so what is this electronic configurations uh, electronic numbers all these things again we are going to study in detail and even the electrons will be having a specific electronic number it differs from element to element and even the properties of atom because of electrons are all included in physics due to the interaction among atoms okay atoms interacts with atoms so due to the interaction between atoms molecules are formed uh, which means if i say h is an hydrogen atom then when two hydrogen atoms interact they'll form a molecule so now h2 is a molecule got this yeah. so due to the interaction among atoms molecules are formed and these atoms do not remain stationary inside a molecule but they perform rotational and vibrational motions so the radiations emitted from atoms and molecules uh, so we are going to study about those radiations which are emitted from atoms and molecules in physics okay as i told you these atoms interact and they form molecule what happens if uh, molecules and atoms combine together if atom combines with molecules what it will form yes whenever atom and molecules combine together we get different phases of matter okay we get different phases of matter okay whenever atom combines with molecules we get different phases of matter so we all know the different phases of matter isn't it that is gas liquid solid depending on physical conditions in the next class again we are going to study about those different phases of matter